Hello YouTube, uh, this is uh, Mr. Clean, and uh, here's an Infinite Series question that uh, is pretty good in terms of like review and kind of understanding the concept. Um, pretty much we're going to find the first four non-zero terms and the general term from the Maclaurin series, so that means the center is at zero. And we're given g of x here is the integral of sine um, x squared, and we have an initial condition. And then we have to specify what the interval of convergence is, so that's part A. And then part B, we're given a new function, function h of x, which um, ties back to um, g of x, and here's g of x here. And we also have an initial condition for that as well. So let's jump right into it. So um, pretty much looking at this right here, we can see that we have to take the integral of sine of x squared. Um, and seeing how we have to find the first four terms, kind of dealing with series, uh, we kind of, you, you should relate this to a well-known function that you know the series for, and this is what you kind of have to memorize. Um, you should know that the sine of x, um, when you express it in terms of a polynomial or an infinite polynomial series, would look something like this. So that means if we wanted to find what sine of x squared was, everywhere you see an x, um, you just replace it with an x squared. So that would look like this. So all I did was, well, wherever there was an x squared, or an x, you put an x squared, so uh, 3 times 2 would give you 6, and 5 times 2 would give you 10. You know, just exponent basic rules. Um, so then, the only difference is that you would see besides that is the nth term would change. So, again, going back to the same rule, whenever you see an x, you put an x squared. So the only thing that would be different here is you just put a x squared. Um, so now we have that, but that's not even what we're doing. We have to, or that's not even like, um, we have to take the integral. So, sorry, it's kind of late and I'm tired. Um, pretty much you just take the antiderivative of every term. This term, that term, blah, 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 blah. And you're going to do that, and I'll go ahead and do that real quick. Okay, so the antiderivative of x squared would be one-third x cubed, because you add a power and then divide by that number. Um, same thing, antiderivative of x to the sixth would be here, you raise it to power, so it becomes 7, and divide by 7, and then same thing, just times 3 factorial. And then um, antiderivative of x to the 10th is x to the 11th over 11 factorial, over 11 times 5 factorial, since that was from the original. And then, you know, dot, dot, dot. So what's the difference in the nth term? Well, the x is stay the same, and um, pretty much... If we were to distribute that here, what would we have? We'd have an x to the 4n plus 2, right? But that would give us um, even terms, right? We want odd terms. So how do we make it odd? We add 1. So it would be 4n plus 3. And that's the difference with the nth term there. Um, Another thing, too, look at the denominator. We have a 7 here and 11 here. Um, it's going to look kind of weird, but the nth term would be also 4n plus 3 in the denominator. Also times, remember, that factorial, that always stays there. So this is the stuff that made it different um, in terms of the nth term. So now that we have that, there's one thing we're missing. I don't know if you guys caught it, but there should be a plus C whenever you take the antiderivative, right? So you could do plus C. Um, a better place to put it would actually be right here. Let me just make a spot for it. Plus C. And then, yeah, you get what I mean. So like put it up front. Um, I'll make it neat in a second. But let's go back up here. Um, look what we have. We have an initial condition. And just kind of going back with integrals, if you have an initial condition and an integral, you can make a full equation. So um, if you see, if you plug in 0, you get 1. So that means you would get um, 
0 minus 0 plus 0, blah, 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 blah. And then you know that g of 0, which was what we plugged in, would be 1. So that means that c must equal 1. Oops. Yeah, there. so c equals 1. So our final equation in terms of what g of x is that. And our c here will be right there. And that's our four terms. One, two, three, four. Um, and that's g of x. So the next thing we got to find is the interval of convergence. Um, and if you know, it's kind of just thing you have to, you kind of just have to know it. Um, it'll save you tons of time instead of doing the ratio test. So ratio test. You do not want to do that because it would take too much time. Um, if the pretty much the interval of convergence is negative infinity to a positive infinity, so all real numbers, because um, when you integrate, it, the interval of convergence doesn't change. So IOC does not change. Um, went from the original function which was sine of x. So the interval of convergence for sine of x is negative infinity to positive infinity. It's kind of another thing you have to know. It's kind of difficult to explain, but the graph looks like this. So, you know, goes up, goes down, goes up, goes down, so the numbers just keep oop, uh, converging because you go up this, the same amount as you come down, right? So that's why it goes on forever. Um, that's the interval of convergence, so I'll write it there again. Okay, next part is a new function, h of x, which is defined by the integral of x times g of x, dx, and we're also given an initial condition. So let's just write what g of x is. So that's g of x from what we got from our previous answer in part a. So if we want x, g of x, we just multiply everything every term by x. So um, pretty much just x times 1 is x, x times x cubed would be x to the fourth over 3, etc. Because yeah, uh, So I'll write that down real quick. So as I explained, we just multiply everything by x, which is pretty much basic algebra. But one thing we got to do that's the calculus part, or even algebra 2 kind of stuff, is the nth term. So what's the difference between these two terms, or any of the two terms in comparison, well, this one's a 3, this one's a 4, so you could say even odd, or 1 plus, and that's exactly what it is, 1 plus more in the exponent, so that means this would be a 4 instead of an original 3. Um, but notice how this stays the same because the denominators do not change, because um, we only multiply by x. Alright, but what do we have to do to this? We have to integrate it right? Because that's what h of x is. So that means the same thing. Do antiderivative rules. You would get um, x squared of the one half and you're going to do that antiderivative for each term and then find the nth term. So I'll do that real quick and explain. So this is our h of x. Remember all we did was take the antiderivative. So right here antiderivative of x to the fourth would be one-fifth x to the fifth. So all you do is bring the five of the denominator since it's one-fifth and the 3 still remains, so that happens to everything here, so boom, boom, right? And just keep it going. So the nth term gets kind of tricky here. So um, pretty much, again, difference. This is evens, this is odds, and they're an exponent, so how you change that? You add 1. So we originally had 4n plus 4 before, so now we're going to have 4n plus 5 um, for that. And notice how we're adding stuff to the denominator as well, so that 4n plus 5 is also going to come on the bottom here in the denominator, 4n plus 5. But we also have those other odds, so if you if we did 4n plus 4, it would be even, but we want odds, so we got to go down again, 4n plus 3. And that's how we'd get that, and that would be our h of x, and... You may be wondering, well, where's your plus c? Well, if we did add a plus c, which we should, but look at our initial condition here. It's If h is 0 is 0, then c would be 0 because, so 
so c equals zero because c plus zero plus zero 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 blah 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 blah. Um, so h of zero equals c plus a bunch of zeros that go on pretty much forever. Um, c would equal zero, and that's pretty much why we don't need to include it. You could put a zero there, but remember they asked for non-zero terms, so. That's pretty much it. Hope this helps.